the next thing we'll look at is dynamic groups. So we're going to look at how to use Okta workflows to assign group membership based on enrollment status. Next slide. And by enrollment, we mean enrollment in a second factor of authentication. So, so the use cases that we've seen uh, with our clients is that once a user has been enrolled in MFA, they sometimes want to add them to a group so that they can be enrolled in appropriate policies, uh, such as the factor sequencing policy, which deals with which factor is going to be asked of the user. So, you know, maybe if they're on network, you only need to send them an SMS, but if they're off network and they're a super admin, you might want to ask for a hard token as a second factor of authentication. The other thing we've seen it used for is uh, email campaigns towards strengthening MFA posture. So, for example, some organizations that are new to having a multi-factor authentication want to start their users off easy, just asking them, you know, for a text notification, but as we know from our NIST standards, text notifications aren't as secure as say a, a soft token or a hard token. So maybe wanna, we wanna send them an email saying, you know, it's great that you're using SMS as your second factor. Um, have you considered registering to use, you know, OctaVerify, uh, Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator, or any of the soft tokens? Next slide, please. So the solution we're going to look at today is using Okta workflows uh, to allow you to manage dynamic groups based on the multi-factor authentication lifecycle events. Next slide. And I will pass it back to Tony to show us how it's done. Thanks, Tracy. So currently in Okta, there's no way to dynamically create a group uh, based on users who have like enrolled in MFA or even a particular MFA factor. So, but with Okta workflows, we can, we can work around that. Oops. Uh, so I'm going to create a new flow. So then just like the previous flow, I'm going to go to the Okta connector and look for an MFA enrolled event. But actually there is no MFA enrolled event. So what do we do? Does anyone have any suggestions on how we can get this to work? Tell us, Tony. Uh, so what we have to do is uh, use an actual Okta event and have the Okta event call uh, an API endpoint in the in Okta workflows. So I'm going to create my API endpoint uh, workflow, and then I'm going to save it. Call it uh, MFA activate event. Save all the data again. And I'm going to turn it on. Then I'm going to I'm going to enable the API access. So I'm going to expose this as a webhook so that it can be called from Okta. And all I really need for that is the invoke URL. Now I go back to my Okta tenant and go to uh, workflow and event hooks. And here I'm going to create an event hook. And then this one's going to be called MFA activate. I'm going to put in the URL from Okta workflows. You'll notice this nice little hint that says, since this is an Okta API URL or Okta workflows API URL, don't need to provide verification. So I'm going to delete that. And then uh, within requests, we don't need to add any custom header fields. Uh, for subscribe to events, we want the MFA event for activate. So I type MFA, and then look for the user MFA factor activated event. Click that, and then click save. So Okta has this nice uh, preview uh, mode for uh, events where you can uh, trigger them and then test just to test them out. So you select the event that you want to trigger. So in this case, there's only one uh, that this one subscribed to, which is MFA activate. And then uh, you can pick from a couple of different events. Well, looks like it's the same entry, but. So then down below, it shows you the uh, pay JSON payload that this uh, 
event hook will deliver to your API endpoint. So you'll notice there's the, the one the piece of data that we're interested in is this uh, data entry. And you'll notice it's got an events attribute that contains a list with actually just one object underneath. Uh, and the one we're interested in is uh, target because this is the affected user that that would have uh, set, been set up for MFA. So actor is the person doing the action, which if it's the same person, but for an MFA activate, usually it's the same person, but not always. It could be called from like an API by an admin by an admin API token or something. So, but what we're interested in is this target here, which also contains a list of uh, of a of a user. So, and the thing we're interested in is this ID, which we're gonna pull from the event and then add to a a group. And, sorry, Tony, and sorry for interrupting you. And I noticed uh, some uh, uh, geolocation geo data. Uh, if you scroll up, mm -hmm. is it used for factor sequence? Uh, this is so the event that these. This is the the geo data from this particular uh, MFA activation. Mm -hmm. So you'll you'll see that you know it was from my IP and and uh, you know where I came from or where mm -hmm. I did the enrolling of MFA. I see. Got it. Thank you. So, yeah, if you wanted to use that in your workflow, you, you know, you certainly you can can do that because this is, this data will all be in the payload. So basically, it's yeah the the initial initial and uh, um, enrollment data that was used, right? That's that's right. This is this is uh, me enrolling into Okta Verify mm -hmm. on, yep. through Okta, and this is the data that it pulled. Okay. Thank you from the logs. Yeah. And Tony, there's a question in the chat from Tim oh, okay. asking if there's anything we should be bearing in mind about not inadvertently exposing any of these events that don't require authentication, like any common pitfalls or oversight. Uh, so with 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 uh, Octo workflows, uh, you don't have to do any authentication between the event to to for an event hook to call Octo workflows. They they've already established the the, the communication. And if you were to expose your uh, Octo workflow as a API endpoint to the internet, uh, which is an option, then you'd probably want to do some kind of uh, authentication on that API endpoint. Is that? Yeah, cool. OK. Thanks, Tony. <laughs> OK, so, so yeah, so I'm going to deliver the request. And this will actually call that endpoint. So I'll click close here. You'll notice that that MFA active event, MFA activate event got triggered 10 seconds ago. So we'll go and take a look. Go to the flow history. So yeah, so here's the body, uh, which is basically that same JSON payload that we saw in that event. So, so the Best way to pull the relevant data is with a object uh, get multiple. So where you can pick several values from an object at once. So then you drag the body from the endpoint. And then you, here you specify the, specify the entry that you want. And in our case, it's, data dot events then to access the the list and since since it's a list of just one entry that we're interested in we can just reference it with a zero and then target and click save and i'm going to go back to my event hook and then click deliver request again to see if i pulled out the correct object or entry in the object so then here's my get multiple card if I scroll down, you'll see that the, that data events uh, zero target pulled out a list of one object with the object ID and some other information about the user that I'm interested in. But really, all I care about is this ID. So if I want to, I can uh, pull out 
I can use something called a list pluck. What, that'll, what that lets me do is uh, given the list of objects, I get a new list containing just the piece of that object that I want. So I'm gonna drag that uh, list of uh, users with all the different attributes into a list. And then I just want the ID. So I click save. So it, it'll give me, uh, so down here, it should give me a list of just that ID. So I'll go back to my event hook again, click deliver request, go back to my workflow, check flow history. And I see my list pluck processed. And then you see down here, the resulting value. And now is just, just a list of the user ID. So now I wanna take this list of IDs and add it to a uh, group. So if I go back to my Octa tenant, I've got a group already created called MFA enrolled, which has nobody yet. But what I want is the group ID here. So now I go back to uh, workflows. So now I want to, I'm going to create a child flow to add a given user ID to that Octa group. So create a new flow, I'm going to trigger it as a child flow. So a child flow, that's like a subroutine or a subflow that gets triggered from another flow. So you can specify inputs like our arguments. So in my case, I'm going to add user ID, click save, I'm going to call this add user to MFA. Group. Save the data again. And I'm going to add do an app action, go back to Okta, and then add user to group. So then my uh, group ID that I got from my tenant. Now the user ID, I just drag and drop from the input from the child flow. Now I click save. So now I'm going to go back to my MFA activate event. Well, actually, I should turn that flow on too, and then go back. To now go to the MFA activate event. So here I've got my list of uh, user IDs. So, but my uh, child flow takes just the user ID. So the way, the way I process that list is with a list uh, for each. So I give it my list of user IDs and then I choose which flow I wanna run for every entry or every item in my list. I'm going to choose add user to MFA enrolled group. So now I have to specify what I want to pass in as the user ID. So click on this little arrow and it's just going to be the item in the list. So now click save. Now I'll go back to my, uh, my uh, Octa tenant and go to my event hooks again. Now I'll go back to that preview. The MFA act activate, and then there's my uh, event again. So if I scroll down, deliver the request, go back to my MFA act event, activate event, see that it fired again. Now I'll actually I'll go to the, which should have also called the MF add user to MFA enroll group, which it did. So I'll go to the flow history, and I'll see that. Uh, also added uh, this user to the group, which should be me. So I'll, now I'll go back to my uh, group for MFA enrolled. And I see one user has been added and see I was added to the group as someone who enrolled in MFA. So to recap, uh, we used an Okta event to call uh, API endpoint within Okta workflows. And then we used the we used the, was that the group, uh, the group get multiple to pull out the uh, entry in the body that we were interested in, then called list pluck to whittle down the, our list to the entry that we wanted. And then we call the list for each on that list, then called the 
child flow that adds my user ID to the that MFA enrolled group. Are there any questions about this particular flow or even the one before? Oh, I have a question. Uh, like we used the uh, user ID. Can we use other attributes for uh, this enrollment? Like just based on some particular attributes like postal code or uh, IP, IP address range or something like that? Uh, so for this particular event, uh, you, you get the, so then when the user comes in uh, from an activate event, you get, uh, there's certain attributes that, that come in for the given user, right? Mm -hmm. So like, so in this case, you'll, you'll see that this is the user that was uh, I see. enrolled in MFA, right? So really this is the uniquely identifying mm -hmm. feature of the user. Uh, alternate ID is also unique actually, that's the username. So, mm -hmm. But usually this is more useful when you're doing Okta, Okta actions, like adding users to group, and whatever. I see. Thank you. Yeah, I missed uh, missed the uh, this step specifically. Oh, okay. Thanks, Tony.